Dinesh. Very good morning to all uh, from US and a very good afternoon to all from India, UAE and Europe. First of all, I thank Dr. Frank Dichter to invite me to chair this esteemed panel. I'm Dinesh Joshi, Chairman, Satyagiti Group from India and Diversified Business Activities. Uh, we have a brilliant gathering of uh, illustrious panelists to speak to us and to share their perspectives. Let me start off with a question for which this topic has been uh, finalized for the session. As the topic of discussion goes, SMEs in most of the countries comprise of 80 to 90 percent of all firms and approximately 50 percent of labor employed. The pandemic has resulted in heavy losses and in some cases shutting down businesses in this sector. What has been the government's effort and incentives to revive this sector in each of your respective countries. May I request the esteemed panel members to briefly introduce themselves and share their thoughts on this for about three minutes. I request Secretary Marshall to go first, followed by Sri Abhishek Singh. Secretary Marshall, please. Hello, everyone. I am Elaine Marshall, North Carolina Secretary of State. I want to thank Dr. Richter and Mr. Noshi and others for this invitation an opportunity to join these distinguished colleagues and other speakers at this conversation. Uh, I was recently re-elected by the citizens of North Carolina for my seventh term, and I'm starting my 25th year in office. Uh, during the month of March, we celebrate Women's History Month here in America, honoring the contributions of women uh, in our country. It's always an honor to be considered a note in history when I became the first woman elected to executive branch office in North Carolina. For our conversation today, it is important that before my time in elected office, I was a small business owner, experienced firsthand the thrills of entrepreneurship and also the challenges. Uh, and I started my career as a school teacher before becoming a lawyer. My practice was representing small businesses uh, particularly women-owned small businesses, women who felt more confident having a legal counselor who understood where they were coming from with work-life balances and many other challenges that women face. North Carolina is the ninth largest state. Uh, we are located in the midpoint of the Atlantic coast of North Carolina. If I go to the side here, you can see that uh, not very well because of the size but North Carolina is about equal distance between New York and New England and Florida. And uh, we are within uh, a thousand kilometers total of uh, 150 million people, uh, basically half of the United States population. So we're well situated uh, with logistics and we're well situated with talent and uh, health care and academic uh, uh, resources and uh, a very competitive work class. Just this morning, uh, Google Cloud announced a their engineering uh, division is going to open up a branch with a thousand employees uh, in the coming year. And the workforce here in North Carolina was the reason that they've been selected. So um, as Secretary of State, I do not do foreign policy, but here I am on an international program. And um, it's a bit different than uh, the United States Secretary of State business infrastructure and uh, business services and a little bit of consumer protection are within my portfolio. And I do not conduct elections. So um, if somebody would have forecast what we needed last year, this time as an elected office holder trying to help small businesses, uh, I would have never predicted what my needs were going to be. But being flexible and being able to um, uh, be agile in um, helping our businesses, mostly two thirds of North Carolina's business is small business. So um, it, we took a lot of time in helping people getting back in state uh, after um, assistance came from um, the government to help people. And we had to do a lot of uh, legal gymnastics to get uh, corporations back and LLCs back where they needed to be. We have more than 930,000 small businesses, more than 95% of our businesses in North Carolina fall in this category. Uh, there have been tax grants, tax credits targeted at some of these industries that are hardest hit 
like the restaurant industry, childcare industry, anything related to hospitality and transportation for leisure is greatly affected in our state. Um, our largest, uh, the restaurant and hotel industry uh, is the largest small business sector with 258,000 employees. Um, the, to spur the economy and help small and medium-sized businesses, Congress, Congress approved several rounds of stimulus checks. In North Carolina, we did work very carefully. Uh, last year, this time, we had no idea the challenge of the volume of work that was going to be facing us, but we uh, uh, greatly um, upgraded the technology of our employees so they could work from home. Uh, so that we helped more than 5,000 companies in the month of April alone of 2020 get their first round of PPP loans available. We actually reinstated over 1,100 corporations over the Easter holiday alone. We've had a significant amount of state and federal dollars to enhance broadband in many areas in North Carolina, that being a key to survival, whether it's a survival for those that are only dealing here in North Carolina or survival for those that are in the global market. Um, but North Carolina has um, significant challenges with getting high speed internet. We've been slow uh, at this process, but we need to educate our children remotely more often now than before. And uh, we're, we're finding fortunately that funding from uh, this PPP, uh, a lot of it has been not enough, but a lot of it has been dedicated to broadband um, to focus that for our rural and more economically disadvantaged uh, community. So I've probably overgone gone my time, but I wanted to get a few points in there. It's very well covered, Secretary Marshall. Uh, may I request uh, Shri Abhishek Singhji to uh, continue? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinesh. And uh, I'm Abhishek Singh as uh, the CEO of National League Governance Division, and I head the Digital India programs of uh, Government of India. And uh, over the last one year, when we look at the pandemic and the response thereafter, digital technologies and digital transformation has been the key to revival, key to facing the pandemic, and key to now ensuring that the vaccination and back to normal life continues. When we look at uh, India's response, of course, India is today the country with the third highest number of COVID cases. And uh, But our uh, good thing that has been in India is that uh, we have uh, had very low uh, cases per million of population and very low case fatality rates per million. So we have uh, initially when the pandemic began, we had a lot of issues with regards to what will happen. So ultimately what has happened, the pandemic, uh, we see as we look back and see, it has been more of an economic challenge than as a health challenge. And the kind of economic uh, issues that we are facing, especially the slowdown in economy and the MSMEs, the small and medium enterprises facing the brunt of it. So that ensures that the response that the government has is also targeted towards that in order to ensure that the economic stress which the small and medium enterprises have been facing uh, in the last year or so is addressed adequately. And towards this end, the government of India has taken a lot of steps in order to mitigate the crises that they have been facing. Like in India, like uh, the small and medium enterprises contribute almost 30% of our GDP and they have a 34% uh, value, they add 34% of gross added value in the economy. We have almost 63 million small and medium enterprises and all of them faced a lot of stress in the past year. So to as uh, the, uh, the Honorable Senate Senator was speaking just before me, India also adopted a mechanism for giving financial benefits, for giving them very stimulus of various kinds so that they can mitigate the crisis. If you look at the kind of stimulus that was provided, First and foremost was that the entire benefits that are available to medium and small enterprises in the normal course also, that was the basket was expanded by increasing the threshold limit for an or for a company to be regarded as small and medium enterprises. So earlier, the upper limit for a small and medium enterprises was in Indian rupees, almost 100 million uh, Indian rupees was a turnover for be regarded as small and medium enterprises. So this limit has been expanded to almost 10 times now. So our, so even a company with 1 billion turnover is also regarded as medium enterprises. They are uh, eligible for preferred procurement norms in government contracts as also benefits for uh, for various kinds that the, that the government extends to them. Then the stimulus includes like uh, 300, 3 trillion uh, rupees of emergency working capital facility was provided to them. 
then uh, subordinate debt for almost 200 billion was provided for stressed msmes then equity infusion in the msme fund uh, almost 500 billion was given and then if, uh, and then the employee provident fund benefits like the those organize those uh, small and medium enterprises who were impacted by lockdowns and who were not able to continue with their provisions so the provident fund or the the benefits that, that the organizations have to statutorily provide for them this was waived off and the government instead provided for them and then we also set up like an agri infrastructure fund so all those small and medium enterprises who are dealing in the field of agriculture they were provided with that over and above now the banks have extended a longer lending window for small and medium enterprises so that they are able to get access to working capital and ensure that they are able to bounce back and start creating jobs and start creating value in the economy and as we have seen all economic indicators are indicating that even though we had almost a 8% slowdown in the last year but in the coming years our economy is expected to grow at uh, around 12 to 13% as per the imf and other estimates and the contribution of the small and medium enterprises will be a very big in this whole process so to begin with i would like to state only this and uh, as we go ahead we'll have more interactions thank you abhishek ji thank you very much uh who would like to come next uh Sariji, would you like to? So thank you again, uh, Dinesh Ji, to uh, create this panel. You got the group of uh, talented people here. And I just wanted to uh, uh, share with you that uh, going back to I came to America about 46, 47 years ago now. And I was born in the hometown of Gandhinagar, but then grew up in Vidyanagar, where it is my alma mater. And I was also guided by the uh, by the chain of command from the me everything that I had today because of the opportunities that it provided. I got my school. I came here as a teenager. So uh, everything goes to the American system, the American values, the American culture that I was brought up into. Uh, and having said that, I've been into uh, business for about 20 years, into the hotel, small businesses, whatever you could think about it. I had the opportunity and the pleasure to serve on American Hotel and Lodging Association board. I was also on the uh, governmental affairs of the Asian American Hotel Owners Association. Uh, I'm the chairman for Delaware Hotel and Lodging Associations and uh, currently serving as a commissioner for uh, state of Delaware and also the commissioner for Newcastle County. I uh, also leave maybe a couple of miles from uh, uh, President Biden's at this point now. We used to call him senator for a long time. Uh, but it's a very good family. We've uh, known each other for 35 plus years and his contributions and the family's contributions could not be overlooked. And the humbleness that the family comes from it, it is really noteworthy. And I had the honor to serve on the steering committee for his elections all the time. And uh, uh, I, I could say nothing but all the good wish and all the good best luck to the family. Now I am looking at the SMEs from a little bit different perspectives because what the SMEs and or the uh, pandemic has done, when you look at it, uh, government of uh, US has put in approximately $5.3 trillion in the system. And I think pumping that kind of money between the 2.9 trillion that was given by the previous administrations and the current administrations, but it is not the money. Money is one part of it. But with the money goes the humbleness. What we got in the White House today, how it is being relayed. It is a relief package for every Americans. And that is loudly being spoken out by most all the people who are surrounded by the administrations. We just want to make sure that uh, the impact of the pandemic is, and again, I'm in the healthcare currently, so I could see there is a thousand percent increase of the opiate crisis in the, some suburbs of the Virginias and the West Virginias and Delaware, Delaware, West Virginia, and some of the states has been uh, social determinants is one of the uh, drawbacks and people are having issues with the housings. So anything and everything that you could think of it that could go wrong has gone wrong. And I believe hopefully with all the stimulus dollars that's coming that we could put it to the wise use of it and hopefully we could recover as soon as we possibly can. So that is so much for on my part, uh, Dinesh, again.
Thank you, Periji. Ruchi, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dinesh, for the kind invitation. And thank you, Dr. Frank, for organizing this. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. To give you a brief background about myself, I was uh, born and raised in the Middle East. I was born in Libya in North Africa. And then when the Libyan sanctions happened, her family moved to Dubai. So I did part of my schooling from Libya, part of it from Dubai. And then I went to medical college in India. So I'm a trained physician. And after that, I did my MBA from Stanford. And uh, apart from my full-time MBA at Stanford, I also took the Stanford Biodesign course, through which a lot of medical device innovation comes out of. I'm currently in Dubai, and I represent a Dana group of companies, which has been here for more than 30 years. So uh, I'll just talk briefly about UAE's action plan for COVID-19 and how it has like weathered the entire crisis very beautifully. So you might know like almost like more than 52% of the population has already been vaccinated here in UAE. So it's been growing at a very, very fast rate. And the way that it handled the lockdown was really good because like there was, uh, there was just a brief period of lockdown, but after that, like travels were open, everything was open. A lot of people actually flew in to celebrate the new year in Dubai. And, but still like the government has taken all the precautions and made sure that everybody was able to live their normal life as well as like take care of their health. So UAE has been one of the examples of like how to handle a crisis situation, not just like the COVID crisis, but even like the 2008 nine uh, financial crisis or even like the crisis that's that's going on right now for the SMEs. Because as as we talk about uh, SMEs, a lot of uh, small businesses faced a lot of trouble, especially the, the businesses that were into facilities, management, hotel industry, tourism was really down. So the government did a lot of uh, things to actually help out such SMEs. One of the things that it came up with was a 100 billion comprehensive uh, stimulus package for the SMEs. And apart from that, there was a liquidity relief of around 50 billion dirhams for the banks itself. So the banks played an important role to help in this crisis situation. Apart from that, there were other of various steps. For example, there was a virtual job market that was created by the government itself. So like a lot of employees who were let go of jobs, they could actually have their profiles out there in the virtual job market and, and people could actually hire them. And even in terms of like the visa regulations, there are a lot of like relaxation offered by the UAE government. And the UAE government recently announced a 10 year visa for like investors or people who are of specific talents like doctors, PhDs, people who have a lot of patents or who can add a lot to the country. So I think these are the right steps that should be taken by any country. And I think like once the lockdown and everything uh, is opened up, we'll see a lot of movement of people across borders and we'll see like a lot of people for good would actually come down to UAE and, and settle here because the kind of steps that the, the country took during the crisis situation was really good. Apart from that, like uh, currently the country is focusing a lot on preventive health care. So I was recently on an all doctors panels and like all the doctors were talking about like how suddenly all the patients that that we are seeing are so much more adherent to their health, to their medications and all. So like everybody is now much more aware of their own health and the government is also realizing that this is the right time to put in the measures to make make sure to focus a lot on preventive health care because these chronic diseases, they cause a huge burden to the society, to the environment and to the entire hospital systems as well. So this is the right time to actually focus a lot on preventive health care. And I think like the government has figured it out and it's focusing a lot on health care. So that's that's mainly like uh, briefly the steps that the UAE government has taken in times of this COVID-19 crisis. I'll be happy to share more shortly. Thank you. Ruchi, if it's okay, I could share with you my children. My three children are doctors and MD, MBA, UPenn. So I, I sympathize what you're going through, and I'm learning a lot every day from them. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, Ruchi. That was really well covered. Uh, Julian? Uh, Thank you, Dinesh. Um, good, good morning, day. good afternoon to everybody. It's my pleasure to be on this panel. Thanks to Frank. Um, let me give you some uh, some info about my background and the situation uh, in uh, Europe. Um, I made my PhD in the area of uh, robotics and uh, IT, then made an MBA in uh, University of Central Lancashire in UK. And uh, following the changes in Central and Eastern Europe, I was lucky to have a fellowship uh, at uh, Georgetown University for International Economics. Since then, uh, for the last 20 years, I was engaged as an investment banker in uh, 
in Manhattan, in London, and uh, Central and Eastern Europe, working right now with the Collins Group as the International Investments Bank. Um, we are uh, more focused uh, dealing uh, for raising capital and investments, including small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, I was running the largest science and technology park in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Sofia Tech Park, and most of my activities was uh, related to uh, startups and small and medium-sized enterprises. Nowadays, uh, having in mind the COVID-19, I am afraid that the situation in uh, Europe with the pandemic is uh, going uh, uh, on the stage of third wave. Uh, the situation is uh, not so good. The lockdowns continue and the measures are continue to be more strict and more strict even since today. The vaccination is going slowly. But uh, regarding the small, medium-sized enterprises, what is our topic today, I can say that, uh, let's say, um, the government of Bulgaria, which I am located right now, uh, took some measures in spite of the fact that uh, some of the companies which are in the area of uh, tourism, transport, logistics, uh, and uh, all the sectors which is uh, related uh, to supply chain, it's uh, in uh, difficulties uh, for their business because of the lockdowns. But the government provided uh, different programs uh, to subsidize in the area of uh, 60 to 40 finance or 80 to 20 percent by the government or by the uh, ex uh, owners. On the other side, the European uh, Union uh, took an impact uh, measures for the future development in order to recover the situation. And the European Investment Bank provide a lot of uh, debt financing. The banks are in the situation to continue to give uh, uh, loans uh, even without interest in order to recover the uh, present situation. Speaking about the small and medium-sized enterprises, it's more important to keep in an innovative way and to have uh, implemented of new technology in order to be more competitive and to, to fight successfully with the present situation. This is for the moment from my side, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, I'll just add a a minute from my side, because being in India, what we've seen is that our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, has given us a real, very strong leadership. And we have not only, you know, begun to rise because of the reforms, what he did during these times, but India has started to lead as far as the vaccination drive is concerned. And I feel that with his initiative, we will soon also be a pharma capital of the world because we have not just started a vaccination for India, but we have been giving free vaccination to different countries under the, um, the initiative which Prime Minister has started, which is called Vaccine Maitri. That means uh, friendship, uh, you know, through vaccination. And that is how he's getting all the countries <coughs> closer through this initiative. So. That was from my hand, and uh, I think uh, you know uh, it's very clear from uh, the discussion that uh, whichever government you know our esteemed panelists spoke on, they have done tremendous uh, you know uh, I can say um, initiatives to help the uh, SME sector, whether it is uh, you know the U.S. government, whether it is India, whether it is the UAE government or the Bulgaria government. Uh, so I'm sure that from the government side, the intent has been uh, very good. My my next question would be that, you know, financing has been the key for SMEs to bounce back. While governments around the world are trying their best to help, the banks and financial institutions are taking a cautious approach which is, uh, you know, resulting in delay of revival. And uh, 
whether the banks have also passed on the rates of uh, reduction to benefit the SMEs is also a very important question because the 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 central banks of various countries have uh, you know reduced interest rates. Banks have passed on these um, a very uh, you know critical questions, and so how is this going to be overcome? So uh, you know um, because that's going to be um, Quite an quite an important uh, aspect for the SMEs to bounce back, and if they have to revive uh, quickly, so uh, I'll throw open the uh, discussion now. And uh, uh, who would like to go ahead first with uh, or with this question? So we can have a uh, you know open discussion between all the panelists. And us. Dinesh, uh, since I serve on the financial institution as a board member and as a treasurer. Uh, I could at least give you the perspectives from the bank side, and then maybe we could make a more intelligent dialogue. Okay. Would that be appropriate? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, in America, as you know, we have some large financial institutions, but there are some credit unions. They are probably comparable to cooperative banks in India we have. And within the credit union society, what we are learning since the COVID, and again, I'm associated with the local credit union it was started with the old dupont family it's about a 300 million dollar credit union and what we are learning is because of the money influx because of the trillions of dollars that came in the system what happened to at least the financial institution that i'm talking to it that the money started coming into the institutions and we had nowhere to lend money to then when we started looking on the other side of lending the money we ran into credit histories and all the other association that goes with it. As you know, banking is very simple. It's just a spread that the bank works on. When you look at the spread and the margins are thin, it is extremely difficult to balance the two sides. But all the same time, a lot of banks has given uh, whatever the concessions that they could, whether it is uh, fees and the collections and the giving the time for people uh, giving them the chance. Now, when you talk about in the hotel industry, when you talk about some of the large loans, whether they are CMBS or whatever, they are traded on top of traded, if you know what I mean. The originations of the loan never stayed with that firm. So now those are being traded in the market. So you have very hard time fighting the who really owns those assets. So that makes our system a lot more complicated. Again, sure, there are certain things I believe the financial institution could have done differently, better. Uh, but again, I think the situation was all caught all of us off guard. And I think everybody is trying to balance within that. So I will just uh, leave that as a background. Thanks, Betty. Thank you. That's quite an important point. Uh, yes, Secretary Marshall, please. Let me ask statement is actually to facilitate economic development uh, through business and capital formation. To do that, we have critical data in our databases that help businesses make good, informed decisions. So, and if they will use our databases, they will be uh, able to mitigate risk or assess risk uh, in their transactions. So I've got to maintain this very reliable, timely database. Uh, economic recovery, though, takes more than the financing option that what the banks are offering. Our goal is to make recovery sustainable, which means making sure our families and communities can support the small businesses on an ongoing fashion with real livable wages and other actions like, sti like stimulus checks during challenging times. We've got to make sure that the SMEs have access to other community resources to help them be successful, like strong business mentors, opportunities to work with big purchasers like state governments, universities, hospitals, and others. And we've got to have access to this enhanced infrastructure of high-speed uh, broadband. So we've got to have a multifaceted approach, just throwing money into the equation. Uh, while it sounds good and it's sweet at the time, uh, we've got to look forward to making things sustainable. 
Uh, when, when the banks look at credit records and find that mistakes have been made along the way, we got to be able to help people from repeating those mistakes, whether it's the same enterprise or another one. North Carolina, fortunately, has in place a really strong entrepreneurial and innovative structure. We've got community colleges, 58 of them located throughout the community, throughout the state, that all have small business assistance centers. Uh, we've got economic development partners in a lot of uh, government entities at a lot of different levels. And I think one of our largest challenges, these were all in existence before the pandemic, but the need for them has really been heightened. And our challenge as a government is to communicate that these resources are available at no, no cost in a lot of circumstances or at a very modest cost. Plus, then you've got volunteers who are retired executives and others who are willing to mentor organizations if they will take their advice uh, from the experiences that they've had. So creating the sustainability to make sure that that investment of the financing is going to last for a long time, I think, is one of our real challenges. In fact, uh, Dinesh, if I may come in, I would uh, tend to agree with uh, what uh, Secretary Marshall just said, is that this is a very complex challenge that we are facing. On one hand, we have to ensure that the small and medium enterprises, they bounce back, they need funding, they have been out for a cash flow for a long time, and they, many of them uh, work on very, if you, very tight operating margins. And uh, with a lockdown, and uh, which in India we had for extended lockdown for more than two months, and then the many businesses have taken time to recover. So they do need stimulus. At the same time, uh, initially the response of the central bank was that to delay payment of loans, to, uh, extend the to extend the moratorium so that they had a longer window to pay back the loans. But then when you do that, the banks get stressed because banks also have to, the loans that they have advanced, they need their money back. Otherwise their non-performing assets will grow and they will have liabilities that will be difficult to cover. And if a bank falls, then it leads to a vicious cycle. Like uh, it will be difficult to revive the MSMEs without the support of the banks. So on one hand, we need funding of the, for the MSMEs. And the second hand, we also need to ensure that the bank's financial viability don't get impacted. So it's a very tight rope for work for the governments all over. So it requires not only just providing financial incentives and financial stimulus to the SME sector, but also ensuring that the other regulatory support that the SMEs require the other kind of procurement support the SMEs require and the kind of what we started in India is that kind of launching a drive nationwide to support products which are made by small and medium enterprises. So whether they are artisans, whether they are craftsmen, whether they are small manufacturers, whether they are uh, small product companies, how do we ensure that they are able to compete in the, in the tough markets that they are? How do we give them incentives for accessing markets beyond their own limited geographical uh, jurisdictions and go in sell not only within India, but uh, outside India also. So that regulatory support is also as much required as per as the financial stimulus is required. And banks have also to be supported in order to say that banks have liquid capital and banks uh, risk is covered to the extent possible. So they are able to extend more loans to their small and medium enterprises. It has been a complex tightrope walk that the regulators and the government has been doing. The SMEs have been responded well. The good thing in India that we have found is that the entrepreneurship spirit has come to the fore. In fact, uh, in last year, in spite of the pandemic, we found the maximum number of startups that were uh, that that were incorporated. And we we had just in the digital space in which we work in, we had twelve unicorns that were uh, set up just in the last one year. Even though there were huge challenges. So what we also feel is that sometimes challenges also bring out the best into companies and smaller companies, startups, entrepreneurs, they, they know how to cut corners. They know how to become more efficient, how to uh, how to allocate the scarce resources, uh, efficiently utilize the scarce resources that are available and ensure they are able to build products that can meet the standards of the world market. So it's a combination of factors along with the financial stimulus. Financial stimulus is needed, but that's not the only way we can... Uh, we can support the SMEs. So it's been a it's been a complete holistic support for the government and, and the ecosystem has provided, which has led to uh, beginning of the revival of the SMEs. But still a long way to go, and hopefully in the coming year we'll be able to retrieve the loss, the ground that we have lost due to the pandemic. Vishalji, I'll just uh, put a counter question on this: that uh, you know, with the <clears throat> initiative of Atmanirbhar Bharat by Honorable Prime Minister, we are seeing that, uh, 
you know a lot of uh, large scale companies are coming in india and uh, you know i mean earlier you know there has been a lot of discussion that many companies are leaving china and what they're left with is either come to india or come to vietnam or you know find something else but we have seen a lot of uh, large companies coming to india and as a result of which we are going to see you know the indirect uh, benefit or rather direct benefit going to the uh, you know smes and uh, msmes and we we'll, and at least one industry can take you know take care of a couple of uh, hundreds of uh, you know smes and create thousands of jobs so um, uh, as you said that you know stimulus is not required just stimulus is not required well i fairly agreed on that front but for these uh, you know uh, Uh, you know the uh, 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 SME, uh, the MSMEs to bounce back. How would they, uh, you know, uh, cope with uh, the kind of uh, industrialization what is happening in India, investment what is happening in India uh, through these large scale, you know, the global players coming in? So they would also need to, you know, match and uh, you know uh, get orders. But for that, finance is required. So how do you think that uh, you know this would be uh, sort of uh, channelized? See, in fact, uh, along with the incentive for MSMEs, the government of India has adopted Atmanirbhar Bharat, which means like ensuring that India's self-reliance on its manufacturing capacity goes up and its uh, capability of its own entrepreneurs building world-class products goes up. At the same time, this doesn't mean that cutting all of oneself off from the world. So, India has offered a, a, a kind of a business-friendly ecosystem for. for inviting investors from across the world to set up manufacturing units in india and one big incentive one big scheme that was taken up last year and which has been extended to 10 more sectors it began with the electronics manufacturing sector last year the performance linked incentive scheme under which all all those who were setting shop for manufacturing mobile phones to begin with they were given uh, financial incentives and this was open not only for indian companies but it was it was open for even big uh, big tech companies big manufacturing companies and that led to companies like foxconn vistron who manufacture iphones setting up shop in india samsung setting up shop in india and lot of indian mobile manufacturers also setting up plants and units to manufacture mobile phones and uh, in the, and this has led to india becoming the second largest manufacturer of cell phones in india, in the world and then this year this is policy has been extended to other to 10 more sectors to telecom equipment just in a few weeks back we launched a performance linked incentive scheme for manufacturing of desktops tablets wearables other electronic devices in textile sector in various other sectors this scheme has been with automotive parts with the food processing all these schemes have been introduced one very key thing that we noticed wherein again the smes played a big role was in the manufacture of pp equipment because last year during the pandemic india had zero zero capability of producing uh, the personal protective equipment uh, and in no time we have become the world's largest producer of pp kits and these india is providing not only to for the indian requirement but across the world we are providing pp kits we are known for the vaccine manufacturing but other than vaccine manufacturing the other supply chain required for manufacturing of vaccines like the glass vials indian companies are the biggest manufacturers of even the glass vials the syringes that are required for whichever vaccine the world may take but the syringes come from india so our uh, industry, our industries and our entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises have risen up to the occasion invested in the infrastructure that was required even the vaccine manufacturer he invested into the manufacturing facilities much before even the vaccines were uh, approved so this showed the conviction our uh, investors our entrepreneurs have and the world is also showing that interest in india and especially with the china plus one strategy as Uh, as the world is thinking to reduce reliance on only one country and to have at least one more country wherein uh, the democratic principles and the rule of law is withheld much strongly to have their facilities there so that in case of a crisis in case of a disruption supply chains don't get affected so that has also led to a boost in indian manufacturing capacity and capability and uh, over and above that we are also working on mechanisms to ensure the complete supply chain of electronics manufacturing as also other components and when the component manufacturing comes in therein will lie a great opportunity and potential for the small and medium enterprises to contribute to the large indian manufacturing growth story so that's where we are now on this track thank you thank you abhishek i think that was really well covered and uh, you know one can easily come to know the kind of reforms that are happening in india uh 
to make us a strong nation. Uh, anybody would like to uh, go next? Uh, yeah, I can. I can go next. So, in terms of the the UAE government, uh, they have been like focusing again uh, a lot on like the local manufacturing capabilities as well. So, they, I think the the plan is to manufacture around, uh, as uh, Mr. Abhishek correctly mentioned, that with the vaccines you need the injections, the needles, uh, the syringes, right? So, there's a plan to manufacture around 500 million needles and syringes out there in Abu Dhabi because and and then supply it all across the world. Apart from that, like UAE government had like it and it was uh, this thing was in place well before COVID-19. So UAE government is, has the plan of Dubai Expo 2020 and it got postponed for next year. But like even for the last four years that this plan was going on, it, there was a huge focus on procuring material only from SME. So the, the large corporates were not allowed to actually even bid for these tendered uh, that were happening for Dubai Expo. And I think that was a good step and that focused a lot on SMEs and SMEs were in good shape. But the banks definitely stepped in at the right time. And it was like it was all about like how and when the, the SMEs were able to like get uh, put in the right kind of request to the banks. But the banks were ready to support. So I would just like uh, I always talk about it that as soon as the press release comes across that the stimulus is launched, you should just immediately put in your applications to the banks to actually get uh, some of it because it, it really helps if you do that with the right kind of momentum and you like go forefront on it because the the banks definitely had the stimulus the UAE central bank provided a liquidity relief fund of around 50 billion dirhams and then there was a credit guarantee scheme of 1.5 billion dirhams in dubai and 3 billion in in abu dhabi so like the banks were prepared to lend out the money there were extensions on, on the moratoriums. There was extension on uh, on the loans. There was also like some refinancing that happened. And apart from that, I think like uh, one of the things that helped the SMEs quite a lot was credit insurance. So UAE is a much developed market. So a lot of companies do have credit insurance and credit insurance helped a number of companies to stay afloat because a lot of these transactions happen like across borders and all. And, and this was like a force measure clause that that was applicable in terms of like the credit insurance companies as well. So I think that helped quite a lot in terms of like uh, helping out the SMEs and uh, like helping them overcome the entire crisis. Thanks, Uruchi. I think, you know, the UAE government has been extremely proactive for uh, uh, for business, basically, for attracting investment, for, for development, for, you know, creating high quality infrastructure. And the leadership has always demonstrated one of the best abilities in the region, you know. So I think uh, that was quite well covered. Uh, Julian, uh, would like to add something on the, the yeah. financing part? Yeah. I uh, I'm not in a position to speak on the behalf of the government, uh, but as a person who is uh, engaged with different investment projects, I can say that uh, the, the, the government's implemented uh, special financial instruments uh, with the support of the European Investment Bank, which help uh, to guarantee and to take uh, part of the risk for the commercial banks for the providing loans for the small and medium-sized enterprises especially for the innovative projects and uh, regarding the operation, they have some uh, support by the, the, the governments. Therefore, uh, if you look to the perspective of the European Union uh, development, it's a trillions, which is related not only for the large scale companies, but mainly for the small and medium sized enterprises. We're speaking about the three major um, issues nowadays uh, regarding the healthcare, but on the other side, for the green future, for the green deal and the environment issues, therefore the small and medium-sized enterprises will have uh, trillions for the futures, including the digital development. Therefore, these three uh, priority for the European uh, countries, it's important and there is uh, uh, trillions which is uh, in uh, proof budget by the European Union for development.